What's up guys? In today's video, we're going to use a digital multimeter to diagnose a problem with a non-working claw machine. So we'll teach you the basics about how to use a digital multimeter and determine what the problem is to get this claw machine working again. This might also work for arcade games and other amusement games like this too. So if you guys like these style of videos, make sure you leave them a like. All right guys, enjoy the show. What's up guys, Matt here with Galaxy Games 843, back with another claw machine repair video. Like I said in the intro, today we're going to use a digital multimeter to determine what the heck's going on, why this machine won't boot up. It's basically completely dead. And a little back history on this machine, I actually bought it off of Facebook Marketplace. I got a really good price on it. Put your guess in the comments with how much money I paid for this machine. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see if anyone can get it right. But anyway, I bought this off Facebook Marketplace. They said it was working, but then when uh, they tried it out when I, was, when I was there to buy it, it wasn't working. So of course I got a discounted price. But today we're gonna determine what the problem is. And I'm gonna show you how to use a multimeter to go basically from, from where it plugs into the wall all the way through the machine in order to determine what the problem is. Now we're gonna use multiple settings on this digital multimeter, which we'll, we'll, I'll kind of explain each one of them as I, uh, as I you know, check each setting. But I will say, you know, knowing the basics of electricity and how they work, um, games like these use two types of voltages. They use AC ver uh, current and DC current. AC current is what comes out of your wall. It's also known as alternating current. I'll put like a graphic on the screen here too, so you can kind of see a visual of the difference between AC current and DC current. And DC current is called direct current or DC. And basically that's what, um, this machine basically uses all DC. Um, a little bit of AC, but when we plug it in, you're not gonna really see anything. Whereas like a, a game like Donkey Kong, for example, some of the things that you'll see when you plug the machine in use AC and some of them use DC. Typically on the older machines, the lighting is all in uh, AC and maybe a few other things. But uh, this machine, basically everything for the most part is in DC current. So if I plug the machine in right now, I'll show you before, before we get started, it's completely dead. Like we don't see any signs of life whatsoever. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me plug the machine in and I'll, I'll show you how nothing happens. And then I'll kind of, like I said, go through all the testing and, and each setting on the multimeter. So you can, we can determine exactly what the problem is with this machine. I've got a suspicion, but let's rule it out first. All right, let me show you what happens when I plug the machine in. All right, guys, here is the pet shop, the bear haunt machine, and it says doll park down here at the bottom. Um, it's got a, it's got basically clear everything. So the whole bottom section's clear, which is kind of weird to me. Um, of course, it's got the glass doors and everything. But let me go ahead, I'm gonna fix the camera right here on this area, kind of the control panel, so you can see what happens. So I'm just gonna plug the machine in. Now all the switches are turned on, and I'm gonna plug the machine in here. Can we see that on the camera? I'm plugging the machine in. And nothing. No lights up top, nothing on the control panel. Dollar bill acceptor doesn't do anything. Uh, and remember, all the power switches are turned on. So that's not the issue, at least not right, not right now. We're gonna test them though. So, all right, let me uh, turn the machine around and I'll show you how we're gonna start testing. All right, guys, hopefully the lighting is okay. Uh, basically, we're at the back of the machine now. And um, we're gonna, we're gonna start our test with our digital multimeter. Now, I've got a Fluke digital multimeter, which is one of the better brand names. But pretty much any digital multimeter will do. One you get off Amazon is gonna be fine. The only thing I suggest you don't get is the free one that they give you at Harbor Freight. That one is not very good and it's not gonna give you good readings. Um, but basically, you just want to make sure that they have um, AC functions. This is the AC sign right here. DC functions, that's the DC sign. And the third thing we'll need is diode test or continuity. Sometimes it has a beep. Um, this one's a little bit older, so it has, mine's a little tricky. Sometimes it doesn't beep when I go on continuity, um, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, let's see. Can I set this up so you can see it on camera? It's got a stand, but I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera or not. Let's see. Maybe I can get a little bit closer. Hopefully that works. Okay, so basically, um, let's talk about a few things. So these are our multimeter leads. You'll see one is red, one is black. So the red indicates the positive lead and the black indicates the negative. 
When it comes to AC current, which is what we're about to test, we're currently set to AC current right here. You can see that on the, on the symbol. And I'll show a better picture on the screen here of what the AC current symbol looks like. That's the AC current symbol. We're going to test, first we're gonna test our plug and we're gonna make sure that we've got anywhere between 110 and 120 volts of AC power coming out of the plug that's gonna be going into our machine. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna insert two, the leads into these, these two things here. And can you guys see this? We're at 119.6. So we wanna be between 110 and 120 for AC current. So again, I've got the, my two leads there in the plug and it's 119.7 at this point or 0 0.6. Okay, so we know our plug coming into the machine or basically our power source that we're powering the machine with is producing the voltages that we want. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna unplug this. This is the plug going into the machine. We're gonna unplug our leads from our plug and we're gonna put the main, the main power cord into this power strip. Because the next thing we're testing is that the plug uh, or the main power cord is getting the proper voltages. So there's not a, a break in the, in the power cord or anything like that. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put one lead inside this, and the other lead inside the other one. And here we go. 119.6, 119.7. So that means our power cord is good, okay? Power cord is not the problem. Okay, I'm gonna take the leads out. And now I'm gonna plug, I'm gonna get all tangled up here. I'm gonna plug the power cord back into the machine. Next thing we're gonna check is our main fuse. So this is the main fuse right here, but before we take it out, we're gonna change the setting. We're gonna go on over to continuity or diode test. So yours might have a little Wi-Fi looking symbol and that's, that's the audio or the audible symbol for continuity. And basically, like I said, mine doesn't always work right. But when you touch the two leads together, it should make a beep. Now my, again, my, my uh, multimeter here is a little bit old. So it's not beeping, right? But watch what happens on the screen when I touch them together. See how I'm getting a, a reading through it? Because basically what continuity does is it sends a small charge through the leads and when they connect or when they complete a circuit, then you get a, a, a symbol. Actually, let me unplug that for just a second. Okay, so here's the main fuse. I'm gonna take it out of the fuse holder. Visually it looks good, but you never just wanna visually trust a fuse. So what I'm gonna do now, remember I'm on continuity mode. I'm going to touch the, each end of the fuse with the leads. And I need three hands right here to show you properly. But we're getting a reading through the multimeter. I don't, know, I don't know if you guys can see that. We're getting a, a reading through the multimeter and all I'm doing, oh, hey, there's a beep. Hear the beep? All I'm doing is touching the leads to both ends of the fuse. Good, okay. Like I said, sometimes the beep on this thing works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so we pretty much ruled out everything here at the back. Um, there is a main switch right here too. I know it's hard to see. The only thing is that it's kind of difficult for me to get in, into, I, I, I guess I could pull these four screws out and test that switch, but I'm actually gonna bypass that switch for just a minute. I'm not gonna test the switch right now. Let me turn the machine back around. We'll take a look inside and I'll show you what I'm gonna look at next. Okay, we're back to the front of the machine. One thing I do want to point out, I don't know if you guys can see this on camera. Let me move the camera over here for just a second. Can you see this? This is another switch. This one, the light is on in the switch. So that means that this switch is getting AC power and it's lit up. So I'm guessing that switch is probably okay too. We could test it the same way we tested uh, the other stuff. Let me open this drawer first though. And basically inside this drawer, what we see here is we've got the main AC power coming in right here, just a black power cord. Here's the power supply for the claw machine. And what that basically does, it takes AC power and converts it to DC power because from here on out, everything else inside the machine runs off of DC power. So looking at this, I can tell this is a ground, this is five volts. Uh, there's a key right here on the sticker and it shows the red is five volts, Orange is 24 volts, 
Black is still ground. White is, uh, that is, looks like 48 volts. And then the yellow is 12 volts. So we'll need to make sure that we got all those voltages coming out of here. So we're still testing AC though. Let me, uh, let me put my multimeter back on the AC setting. And can you see that on camera right there like that? Yes, yes you can, okay. So the next thing we're gonna test for AC is the power going into the power supply. So we're gonna unplug this and I'm gonna take again my uh, leads and put them there. And you can see we've got 119.7 again. Can you see that on camera? 119.7, 119.6. So that means all of our AC power is good. There's no problems with AC power. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back in. And now I'm gonna switch over to DC power. And again, I'll show you what the symbol looks like down the screen, but I'm switching over to DC power. Because remember I said everything after the power supply runs off of DC power. So let's do this. Let's unplug the power supply. This is going to the main board right here. And what I'm looking for, I'm gonna just uh, put my leads inside. Remember I said red and black is positive and negative. DC power, it matters. AC power, it's alternating, so it doesn't matter. For DC power, it's direct. So you need to make sure you have your red and black leads in the proper places. And black is always basically gonna be your common or your ground. So let's put the black into the ground or the common. Okay, we got that in there. And we're gonna put our red in our five volts. We're gonna see if we're getting five volts. Can you guys see that on the screen? We're getting zero, point zero zero voltage, all right? So no five volts. Let's check that, uh, I think that's 24 volts. Let's check that. Zero. Let's check the 40, uh, maybe this is 24, either 24 or 48, I can't remember which one's which. Zero. And lastly, we'll check our 12 volts. Again, zero. So what's that say? Our power supply is bad. <laughs> that's gotta be what it is. Okay. Um, the good news is I happen to have another power supply right here. So let me, let me uh, remove the old power supply and then I'll show you some more things. All right, so I've got the new power supply set and I haven't plugged it into anything yet. Um, I've put my leads inside the connector because what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm going to plug in the AC to the power supply. I want to make sure I'm getting voltage. So I've got my leads, my positive in the 12 volt line and my negative in the ground. So I'm gonna plug it in and hopefully we get 12 volts out of this. If so, then we can hook it up and see what happens. Let's plug it in. All right, you see, 12.10 volts. See that? We've got 12.1 volts. So that means this new power supply is working. The old one wasn't producing any, any, uh, any voltages whatsoever. So I think this is gonna fix our problem. So, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. I'm gonna unplug the machine completely because what we wanna do from this point on is hook up all the rest of the wire. So this wire goes over to here. I think this is for the lights. I think it's the lighting wire. And then this is gonna go onto the main board. One thing you wanna do, you wanna make sure that your, you know, your, your wires line up I did check that off camera, so the 12 goes to 12, the 24 goes to 24, the 48 goes to 48, and the five goes to five. All right, so we've got to plug back in. For the time being, I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this drawer back in. Let's set up the camera for a full machine view, and then we'll go ahead and plug it in and see if this thing comes back to life. All right, it's time for the big test. I have not tested this off camera, so we are gonna see together if the replacement power supply fixes this machine. Again, this is a pet shop, the Bear Haunt. I'm pretty sure this machine came from Alibaba or one of those places like that, but I bought it from Facebook Marketplace. Non-working for a pretty good price. Again, let me know in the comments uh, what you think your guess might be as the price I spent for this machine. Okay, should we plug it in? Here goes nothing. Oh yeah. Look at those colors. 
Oh, that music is terrible. But the machine's working. That's a good sign. Everything seems to be good. All right, let's uh, let's open up the door. I just have a, a spare key in the door right here to hold it closed, because I don't have any locks. That music is not not cool, though. All right, let's uh, let's see. Can we give it a, a, a credit? Okay, we've, we're into the settings now. Can we turn this music off? Let's see. Basic set. It's currently a one point, one coin per game. Okay. Volume. Turn that volume way down. Whoa, not that low. Okay, can't turn it all the way off. Is there a free play mode? Free to play. There we go. Okay. All right, I think we're good. I think we got it on free play. I think we got the volume is basically as low as it's gonna go. Let's get out, let's get out of here. How do I get out of this menu? There must be an exit button here somewhere. There it is. Okay. All right, we're on free play. Put that key back in that door for the time being. Let's test this machine out. Let's see how it works. Looks like it works pretty good. It actually runs quite smooth. Now this machine is definitely going to need a good cleaning. And I'm sure we can settle the settings. We're not going to do that on camera. You guys have you know, you guys, especially you out there that have your own claw machines, you know how to change all your ratio settings and all that kind of stuff. So it's all looking pretty good though. Current, like I said, currently got it on free play. Yeah, I'd say it looks pretty good. I think it's, I think we're pretty much good to go. I think we could wrap this video up. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. We fixed this pet shop bear haunt machine with a digital multimeter and a replacement power supply. So hopefully you guys learned some, some of the basics about utilizing a digital multimeter. I know when I first started doing games, like that was the hardest thing for me to grasp. And I wish there were some good videos or some mentor people out there that could have taught me how to use a digital multimeter the right way. So hopefully my explanations kind of helped. If you have comments or have questions about how to use a multimeter, put them down in the comments. You know, I try to answer each comment or at least respond to each comment on every video. Sometimes I don't get to, get to them all, but I try. Um, also guys, if you like this video, make sure you leave it a like and also help us out, hit that subscribe button. Again, we're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers this year. We're about to pass 60,000, so it's a pretty lofty goal. We, we, hopefully we have some good months this year. But thank you guys for supporting the channel. If you like these videos, if you like these learning uh, repair videos, again, leave them a like, let me know in the comments, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos. Once again, guys, this is Matt with Galaxy Games 843. We'll see you next time.